Hello Adobe Life. Ah, we see you again. Uh, my name is Tomas again. I work at Adobe. I'm a creative technologist here, and I can talk for hours about um, you know our recent Firefly. But today we have a guest, Fudu Vao. Hi. Uh, that is going to share with us. Um, you know, uh, creative uh, you know uh, project mm -hmm. uh, using Adobe Firefly. Feel free in the meantime ask questions in the, in the chat. Um, ask us any questions that you may you know have for uh, Voodoo Val, uh, for myself, and in general about Firefly. I will be sitting here quietly for most of the uh, uh, stream and checking your comments and interrupting her. Like yes, yes. So, the help, like, <laughs> more than welcome to interrupt me, though, because okay, cool. we have been vibing off camera. This is going to be such a fun <laughs> stream. Good. I'm super excited. Um, but just a little bit about me. Um, for those of you who have never um, caught one of my streams, I'm a digital illustrator, and I work a lot in Photoshop and Fresco. Um, and today, we're going to be kind of uh, generating some inspiration and reference for colors and textures, materials, yes. and things um, for in, in, in Firefly for some magical items we're going to be painting up. And I'm super pumped. We can actually take a look at some of the stuff that I've got prepared. So um, I am kind of in love with like all things dark, spooky, magical, mm -hmm. hence the name Voodoo Val. <laughs> I can't hide it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and uh, so we've got a soul vial here today, which is kind of alive. Um, and uh, we're going to be generating some stuff along these lines just to get you know some co colors, uh, materials, uh, inspiration, as I mentioned. Um, but I'm going to need your help because um, while I have kind of an idea for how I want this to look, um, I would love to take uh, some suggestions from the chat, from you as yep. well, um, for what sort of stuff we can do here. Um, and we're also going to need some flavor text. So yes. I can come up with what this soul vial is all about, but if anybody has any spooky magical suggestions Go ahead. we could definitely take from there so I'm gonna I've got some images up but we're gonna jump into um, uh, Firefly right quick um, and let's take a look at what we can kind of create and um, add into our file for reference so I have created um, these, which you saw in there. It's just like magical liquid in a mm -hmm. fantasy vial with stone details around the glass. Um, and that's like kind of what I came up with because that's kind of a description of what I'm illustrating. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we could also do some stuff that's just like almost like creating a swatch of materials um, because I might want to sample colors and see like how that material looks or just be able to have a visual representation of the, the perfect reference for me. So another thing that I can do here is say like um, uh, dark stone with uh, do you always start with dark? I do. Yeah, oh, really? I do. That's your default. Uh, <laughs> or magic. Like, a default, uh, default <laughs> setting. like what I wanted to say, actually, Val, and, and thank you for for bringing this, is that you're using this as a as an asset generator, mm -hmm. not like a final product, not uh, assuming that this will generate everything within one prompt, but mm -hmm. you're using this for a larger picture that you're creating, and that's in your brain, in your imagination, that's where your creativity shines, right? Yeah. So this is just an asset generator. How For me, output, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's typically how I use it in, oh my god. Oh, that's, <laughs> is it dark enough? Yes, Let's see. Okay, it dark is. Enough. But I, you know, like this is the kind of stuff that I, because, you know, my, my personal process when it comes to creating is I like to illustrate it and, and go through all of those steps. Um, that's just my preferred method. It brings me a lot of joy. So I like to do that. But like with the power of generative AI, I'm able to, instead of hunting around for like the perfect, like how, how long would it take me to find stone yeah. that, you know, has gemstones embedded in it and, in, you know, and figure that out um, when I can snag this one, which I think looks amazing. Or embed it yourself. So Val is using yeah. right now copy to the clipboard function yep. that she's going to use just to paste it somewhere else. You don't have to save even uh, yeah. those files. And I can just uh, paste from clipboard Boom. right here, allow paste. And now I have it here. Um, and I can start to typically, um, as I've kind of mentioned in previous uh, 
illustration streams, what I like to do, I think I might put this right here, is I like to just populate my um, file outside of the canvas with a lot of the stuff that I will use for um, reference and inspiration, because then it's there um, and it's not over the top of my my workspace where I'm you know illustrating and stuff. And I just really, can I just say, I think this is so cool, mm -hmm. the way this crystal is like oh, embedded in that rock. And this pink a yeah, little bit there. like almost like an opal kind yeah, yeah, of. Yeah, 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 I see this you know? refraction there. That's so that's awesome. something we could add, which wasn't in my sketch originally, but we could kind of do that here. Like I just kind of put these places where maybe a chain could hang on on the ends of our vial, but we could do like at the bottom, we could have a crystal embedded in that mm -hmm. if we wanted to do that, um, which is pretty cool. Um, also, I see Stony Brasswells in the chat, which I just adore. Stony, Stony's been <laughs> hanging out with the um, a community for a while, just like Christopher. Also, it's good to see you guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've got you know kind of a, a potion reference. We've got um, some cool like crystally reference, and I feel like the last thing we need is um, maybe some inspiration for some kind of magical liquid. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I, we also have to decide kind of what we are going to, like what colors we're gonna use for that. I instantly gravi gravitate to like purple because uh -huh, it's my okay, favorite okay. color. <laughs> but uh, what's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? I Could have you a, choose? I have a blue, that's boring. Um, purple seems interesting. Like I always love to break those colors, mm -hmm. like not to use just purple, but have a hint of some different color. So like it's an, a live organism in a way, yeah. right? Those bubbles or those um, um, little uh, freckles within that. I love to introduce different colors and that sort of enriches this experience for me. Like plain color never interests me, like my t-shirt right now, it's not in, you know, super um, um, inspirational. Mm -hmm. But the colors, it's it's this is what I love. You look at it almost like an image, like as a fractal. Mm -hmm. When you zoom in, you go closer, you discover this. More and more yeah, so and more. when you have just, just blue or just purple, yeah, it's fun. But then when you have some other things, elements in there, I'm not sure if we can get this here, but we can let's try. hope for, for, yeah. for luck. And I love how you use it. Also, it's it's not only, hey, hey, here's what's what I do have in my head, but I'm looking for you to inspire me a little bit too. Surprise me, right? Introduce this element of, of surprise, of, of something that takes me out of my pattern. Because what I've noticed, I'm kind of old guy, I've noticed this over time that I keep doing the same things. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if I don't want it to, right? I go to the same uh, treatments, the same settings, because they, I know they look good. And to be honest, that sort of this moment, what, what you're doing right now, this exploration, it's it's very beneficial for artists to go off their rail, right? Like, yeah. Like, ah, whoa, what's this? You Let kind of come it. to different ideas that you might not have thought on your own. Yeah. Um, just like we basically did that when I realized, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to embed a crystal into the bottom of this vial, mm -hmm. which I was totally not going to do that before. <laughs> but now that I've seen it, you know, yeah. some of these are pretty darn cool. I feel like yeah, I kind like of even this orange thing. It's sort of I don't know influence yeah. there, but I don't want to influence your 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 thing. Oh, influence me, <laughs> influence Folks, me. On Behance folks are commenting, like Fizz Ripple, uh, the light and shadows are fantastic. Thanks, Christian. Um, I want to kind of remove some of these um, styles and techniques <laughs> that I've got here because I think it's making it very opaque. And what I want is something that's like more translucent liquid. We can even add like glowing mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. our, Whoa. there we go. We're getting a little more yeah, viscous. Some, like. and, you, and you get the depth of mm -hmm. it, like the thickness of it. This, this is awesome. Let's say glowing. So before this, we, we, talk, we talked briefly about storytelling mm -hmm. and how uh, this sort of may have it. So even when you create that, it tells you the story, how it was made, uh, mm -hmm. what was it made from, uh, where was it made, right? Your, your, your um, illustration of your, your elements may mm -hmm. suggest, was it made in Sweden or was it made in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. So you may influence the, the, the design with that. So depending on what you put in, a, in, your, in your prompt, mm -hmm. you may create something actually very, very accurate. Uh, and and uh, actually, Firefly does this really, really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I and love I it. love this right Butter. here like that. If we're going to make a vial that's got like some kind of soul yeah, or yeah, yeah. spirit inside, I feel like that blue area with that dark purple underneath is like so Sweet. perfect to like, so that like now I can see like I've got colors that are going to work great. I've got materials that are going to be super fun um, to use. And I can take, you know, this concept that I've mm -hmm. sketched out and we can really start to sort of apply that now um, to uh, some of our some of our work. So I'm going to come in here and I've got like this sketch 
for, I kind of wanted to make like a some kind of video mm -hmm. game RPG card mm -hmm. for awesome. this, you know, like maybe this would come up in game or something as you, you know, retrieve a new item, um, but we'll kind of dim that down. And then um, I do have all of these um, elements on, uh, on different layers here. Christian light number four mm -hmm. in there. People are taking notes. Awesome. Thank you so much, yes. Behance. Uh, that's awesome. I'm observing too, so if I'm too quiet, just ping me from a chat. Tomas, why are you not talking? Because <laughs> I'm seeing this for the first time, somebody working on iPad, actually, uh, which is fascinating. We've been thinking about where, why designing Firefly uh, of iPad, and we did experiments on it. But I never did work on that, actually. Oh, okay. So this is fantastic on many levels. So I'm just like kind of created a clipping mask here because what I want to do mm -hmm. is start to put in um, the shape of like how we might um, create my like spirit mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of ways that I could do it. So I've got like this clipped here. I think I want to take like a darker color um, and I'm just going to kind of like put this uh, kind of scribble in here mm -hmm. because I want to have like this not completely full of like liquid. Uh -huh. um, so we can do something like this and then start to like kind of suggest that there might be like a surface here and then maybe add some of this like strange like, you know, movement here. Yeah. So I just kind of like leave some notes for myself for how this might um, interact with everything that's in the um, the vial, you know, before we start mm -hmm. to like add some more details. Clever on chat mentioned souls. So this is actually, yes. to be honest, this liquid looks like a bunch of souls mixing in there, almost like an Indiana Jones, a mm -hmm. little bit thingy. It's like, you can totally see it. It's, uh, yeah, fantastic. I think I'm gonna snag, uh, I think this is also, let's do the hard round opacity brush, which is just actually default in your fresco if you'd mm -hmm. like to use yep. it, because I think, um, too, I kind of want to, if I use my favorite texture brushes, I'm gonna start detailing right off the bat, <laughs> and that's not really what I wanna do. Um, but we're just going to, this is a concepting phase. You know, so you're got, going from like a general concept to details? Yeah. You never start with the details, right? I know, the, and you want to sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> God, this is exactly that. Yeah. This is the rock I got. This is what I need, but yeah, you shouldn't. You should take your time and like kind of just be loose. And honestly, when I'm more loose, like I am being right now, I can already start to suggest a lot more 3D form. Um, and uh, honestly, I just for anybody else in the chat who is um, a, an illustrator uh, or a painter um, like me, or perhaps that's something that you'd like to do uh, in the future, I think that um, one of the biggest mistakes that I made um, when I was first starting out, or something that a mistake that I would make because I forgot, um, is like trying to detail and create um, those things that I imagine mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm, final mm -hmm. product, my hopes and dreams, try to like jump into that as soon as possible. And yeah. really, I think you should take your time and let the concept breathe, you know? Yeah. Um, and Do you present those concepts to somebody and they have revisions or is it just mostly yourself um, and, and your brain? It depends on the kind of project I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If it's for me, um, I'm more likely to make that mistake because nobody can stop me. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. nobody can say, hey, um, can slow it down. Whatever. But if it's for a client, then I'm typically, um, you know, I'm I'm not really illustrating so much as I'm like completing a first step. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, this is the Direction. the the first round of sketches for revisions, and I'm more likely to remember that I need to do all of that stuff. Um, uh, so it's mostly when I'm working without any rules yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that awesome. I make those mistakes. Um, and I kind of, so I would definitely want to have like this, like kind mm -hmm. of almost like smoke-like stuff coming up. But then I also want to have like, let's grab like some darker value here um, and let's kind of do what we've got going on right here, right? Like there's like this underneath part that's got um, this darker space. Um, and if we add a little bit of darker value here, then we can almost have like this idea that there's, um, not layers so much mm -hmm. um, of the liquid, 
but almost like it's twisting and turning so it's folded in there. Ooh. So we can kind of bring some more out like this and kind of peek it out of the darkness just to, so Val, let, you know. let me ask you this because probably folks are wondering, do you see this final image in your head when you start or you develop it as you go? Do you see the, like, the general shape and form and you just follow? How, how this process looks like? If I'm not interrupting too Oh, much. no, no, you're fine. Uh, yeah. You're fine, yeah. I, I think I definitely see a little bit of it in my head um, and I have like a general idea. Mm -hmm. I would say that it probably doesn't start to like really come to life um, super uh, clearly mm -hmm. until after I start putting uh, pen to tablet or you know pen pencil to canvas. Uh -huh. um, but I definitely have like a rough visual idea um, as I as I begin, and then I'm gotcha. like pursuing that, mm -hmm. like trying to show it to everyone else. And I there's this. Uh, I, I asked, um, I was streaming recently, and I asked uh, my audience uh, something that I have been curious about from all of your perspectives mm -hmm. is like, I see this now. Mm -hmm. Like, I can see the future of this sketch, but I wonder when you do. You know, like, when do you mm -hmm. start to see it the way that I start to see it? Like, because I, I feel confident because I know exactly where it's going because yeah, I have yeah, that yeah, visual. Yeah. But I'm curious to know, like, when do you start to see it the way that I do? where you're like, oh, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, and feel free to put it in the comments as, as well. Um, from my perspective, uh, since you asked, I see it with the with the breaks mm -hmm. in, in a way. So I see this, um, when you first presented this, I was like, okay, I, I think I know where this is going. Then mm -hmm. you add elements and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, wait. Like 10 or 15% of the idea is changing. Like, ah, this is how you're seeing the depth of this, mm -hmm. right? Or the substance within. So I'm sort of narrowing down the, the vision as we go. As the, At the beginning, it was blurry. That was just mm -hmm. in general, if you were to ask me at the beginning, if there's any turbulences, I'll be like, ah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe bubbles, maybe some <laughs> mystical monster will be there. So I have no clue. Now, as you keep telling this visual story there, I keep adding those puzzles, those elements. And the reason why I was asking about this at the beginning is that often we think that we start with a final project in mind, and this is not exactly how it is. That's so you true. don't have to have this final pixel perfect idea in your head. Allow yourself for experimentation, those lucky accidents, and the process, actually. This is how you discover yourself mm -hmm. and, and learn, too, right? Mm -hmm. You make a mistake, you go again, be like, ooh, that's interesting. And the hope is that whatever, whoever you're presenting this to will share the same feeling. Like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, I've never seen this, right? And quietly you can tell yourself, like, you know what? This was lucky accident. But yeah, was, yeah. Right? Uh, and you're like, yeah, of course, it was planned. Like, this refraction there, pff, totally planned. I planned, planned this from beginning to end yeah. and executed it properly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Have perfectly. you seen a glass of water? Yeah. Yes. I know um, exactly what that looks exactly. like from memory. And yes, <laughs> yes. So that, that's why I'm asking. It's often people are discouraged because they don't see the final product yet. And they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't know where this can go. But just joy of experimentation. And this is the progress. Every time you do more, you go further, further. And then after some years, yeah. <laughs> honestly, years of experience, mm -hmm. you can, with this great certainty, predict how it's going to look at the end. And yeah. this, this is called experience. You're at the beginning, you do a few sketches, you're like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we both and probably most people on the, on the chat have those clients or, or friends or family members that can see it with us after mm -hmm. a few years. Like when yeah. you present this to your clients that you work with for a long time, they're like, yeah, okay, I trust you. That, I, I that, get that, it, that's, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Others will be like, mm, I, uh, what is that? You know, could you please give me like a slightly more in work in progress kind of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, so it all depends who you're presenting this to and how you're seeing this. Let me read some scripts. You do the drawing. Uh, let me see some chats here. All right. I always love painting liquid smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Organic stuff is really fun. Yes, yes, yeah. because it's, 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 they're both. Actually, organic stuff is fun because it's unpredictable. It goes and flows in a mysterious ways. But then there is something it, uh, beautiful in mathematically composed patterns that I observe mm -hmm. as human, like I retransform it into something. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, uh, Sam, this is, this is awesome. Um, yes, we're on Behance as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, if I can offer just you know general advice for I can offer <laughs> it through the lens of uh, an illustrator, but um, for any creative really, when it comes to that process that you were um, sharing about, is like um, I think that I halted myself for a lot of years when I get to that point where like you know your your concept you kind of have the idea that you want in your head, but as you start to build it out, you kind of have to trust that process, mm -hmm. right? Of like yes. you know allowing it to develop and stuff. And I would say um, I I can't 
tell you how many years I went through like not making the art I wanted to make because I lost my confidence at mm -hmm. that stage and then refused to push it further. Yeah. But when I finally did and I realized, hey, it has that weird stage and then eventually it doesn't anymore and mm -hmm. you start to kind of chip away at those um, uh, like those concept, the sketchiness, and start to kind of render that out and really hone it and 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 polish it. It's your vision does start to come through, and it wasn't until I finally stuck with it mm -hmm. and actually did it that I realized I don't have to be terrified at this concept stage anymore because I've finished one now. Yeah. So now I can through. push through. So I feel like if you're if you're at that point in your um, in your art journey where um, it's easy to be discouraged at that point when you're like, mm, this isn't really going how I wanted it to go. Um, I highly recommend stick with it and yeah. learn about yourself when it comes to that stage in the process and try to push it farther and just trust that process and see where you get. Um, and it might be the very thing that pushes you mm. past the point of, of that initial like, discouraging fear that is recurring. Yeah, um, I, you know. I'm glad that you mentioned that. There, there's, there's some questions there. I'll, I'll go to it. But I've been reviewing a lot of portfolios in my life, and what I've seen constantly is unfinished work. Mm -hmm. e mm -hmm. Every time we meet and talk about this, uh, folks are like, you know, that's that's just general concept. I didn't finish it. I didn't have time, et cetera, et cetera. And that tells me actually something, something that you mentioned, that mm -hmm. this person may not be not go through this moment of like, I want to finish this. I want this to be finished and how it should be seen, mm -hmm. not just half-baked process. Yeah. And I'm seeing this within them. that They, they, they do a uh, hundred drawings, but none of them is finished mm -hmm. as it should be from mm -hmm. their perspective. So I would highly encourage all of you to go through this hump if, if you didn't yet, if, if you're not producing commercially and you're afraid of, um, I don't know, uh, a feedback mm -hmm. uh, of people or of client or, 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 or folks in general, um, just you know, learn from it too. Mm -hmm. um, this this is how we most likely both learn. People suggest we're suggesting things or requesting things from us, and yeah. we had to illustrate that. Yeah, so, um, absolutely. I think one of the one of the most valuable lessons that an, a, a creative can learn is how to. Um, I won't say how to receive feedback, but how to navigate mm -hmm. feedback, right? It's yes. like, yes. you know, taking from feedback from various sources. Um, and um, I think that that was really one of the hardest things for me um, in the beginning was like the idea of getting feedback on something um, and getting that, you know, like, hey, this is unfinished or hey, that doesn't look quite right. I was like so terrified of uh -huh. it yeah. because we're creating from our hearts. And so when somebody gives you feedback that is less than um, desirable on something that you created from your heart, it can sometimes feel like Personal, yeah, 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 you know. Um, why but are you uh, doing this to me? why? This is the best I How can could do? you? Um, in my case, it was usually my my mom would be like, "I love what you're doing, honey, but that arm anatomy is not." No, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, she, Thanks, would, mom. she helped me. She did. She really did. She helped mm -hmm. me um, uh, for a lot of years, uh, kind of figure out. Um, what I needed to improve on and everything. She's always Next time very we're supportive. Doing <laughs> yeah. uh, with, with moms. Yes. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to say, actually, there, there, there are comments. You're such an inspiration, Voodoo Val. Uh, thanks for being uh, you and creating your own unique artwork. And Thank you. Yeah, that resonates. That's you went through this. You've established yourself. You created this art. Now you're using those tools to help you to, to create that, to streamline it, to make it faster, make, make it better, mm -hmm. make it unique. Uh, uh, that's Thanks. what I love. And now I see the clouds in there, you see? That's like, sort of like when I was talking out. about those steps, this is next step, like the, the turbulence, is, turbulence is there uh, within. I think um, that we could elaborate even more mm -hmm. on like beyond some of the reference that we have and beyond you know this concept because it's very dark and I do want to add some glowing elements but I feel like we need to hide something in there in that <laughs> darkness and Ooh. we'll you know kind of figure out what that might be but I feel like we've been kind of working on this portion of that strange liquid for a while and we probably ought to design the strange monster rock that is encapsulating <laughs> this yes. entire thing so um I'm thinking it's made out of stone, you know, and I'm thinking we have like little bits and bobs kind of embedded in it here, but I also definitely want at least two of these to be distinctly mm -hmm. eyeballs. 
You know what? Just that you're you're thinking about monster rock. Usually those two things don't go together, right? The, <laughs> the mo monster is a monster. It's a flash. It's some flubby thing <laughs> screaming there in the corner. And then you have a rock as a rock. And you combine those two and you, you create something out of it. That, that, that's, that's the creative power. And the, these tools are actually for that. Mm -hmm. You can type the, the, the craziest stuff in there and it will be generated for you. So no longer there is a barrier of like, I don't think I can get, uh, um, you know, monster made out of rock. Yeah, you can. Why yeah, not? De def yeah. Definitely. And these tools are there for you. So the wildest ideas you may have, you can now go and attempt on creating those. So there was, yeah. there was no excuse in a way, right? Mm -hmm. And before it was like, you know what, I would have to do stock that's Maybe, cost me money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't now know. You can now you generate uh, yeah. the greatest, you Good. know, piece that's specific to what you're working on, uh -huh. you know, and that's what really kind of blows my mind about this. And I've like started to use it more and more um, because, you know, as you say, I don't have to go, you know, look for the perfect image yeah. when I can say like I need to know what it looks like when eyeballs made of red rubies are embedded into rock that's alive <laughs> I need to know <laughs> yeah that's, that's a good test like yeah I bet the server got slightly redder there I wonder um, what would happen if we actually tried to generate like try it let's that's, go that's the beauty of that let's, let's try go. it there there is there is a question tomash so it would be interesting to show the beginning of the idea and ac actually finish to show the evolution level of your uh, completed work mm -hmm. uh, we can do this we're taking notes from that if you need something like this, I was showing recently and a few weeks ago a poster that I did using Firefly. Uh, look into it, uh, maybe, or one day, let's just do it. Uh, an hour is enough for, for a poster. Uh, it will be slightly faster. You might you have to watch like two or three times. Uh, but let's totally do something like this. What I mean by finished. And here is something interesting, actually. I'm not sure Val, about you, but, <laughs> and I will say it, none of my work I feel like it's ever finished, finished, to be honest. Like, how about yourself? Do you do you go there and be like, ah, Jesus, I wish I could actually you add this, add that. You speak to my heart. <laughs> you do. You so do. Yes, because I feel like you know, they, people say, like, done is, or, or you know, what is the, the saying? Like, finished is better than perfect. Ah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Done yeah, is yeah, better yeah, than yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I have to tell myself that all the time because mm -hmm. if left to my own devices and if nobody checks on Ooh, me and tells me to knock it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 the yeah, same yeah. project. I will mm -hmm. keep elaborating. I will keep going on it because I, I never really know when that finish point is. And I feel like that's a question people ask me mm -hmm. a lot is, how do I know when it's finished? And I'm like, you just have to finish it. You yeah. just have to finish it. And with time and experience, I think comes the point where you start to understand when your piece comes to a point in the process when it's acceptable professionally, mm -hmm. you know, and then stop there. That's yeah. kind of what I do sometimes. Or deadline. Yeah, or deadline. Yeah, or <laughs> deadline comes oh, around and you Tuesday don't have Tuesday morning. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, good. You know, I've, I've always been so uh, not happy when the clients were telling me do good enough, asking mm -hmm. me to good enough. I, I always know. felt like I can do more. My but name no, has to be on this. Yeah, yeah. People I, have to I, know I made this. Exactly. <laughs> so I always go like, when they say, yeah, that's good enough. So I always have this secret desire of making, making it slightly better. Mm -hmm. Not ruin this mm -hmm. uh, by what I'm adding or change it significantly, but add details. I'm, I'm, I'm known for, for, for adding details to, to, to my work. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what sort of this tool helps me with this tremendously. I can keep adding details and rendering like little doorknobs or yeah. uh, uh, elements or patterns or I don't know, structures and, and textures forever, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a moment for me to stop. Would I doodle for this forever? <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> of course, yeah. Forever, yeah. ever. Yeah, 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 of course. By Go the ahead. way, we've got some eyeballs here. Um, and it's basically like, yes, uh, Firefly will, in fact, uh, create eyeballs made of gemstones embedded in the surface of living rock um, if you ask for it. Um, and I really, really love this because these are like eyeballs, but if you look like the whites of the eyes technically are like almost like gravel encased in crystal, mm -hmm. which that's what I see it as. And like this seems like a piece of like turquoise or something, you know, that just has like a dark center. Um, and I really, really love it. And I also love being able to see that rock-esque texture on, um, you know, the surface of something that is eyeball in mm -hmm. nature. So we can kind of take that with us into the next step here. But another thing that I want to do is um, 
try to generate something that could inspire the way that we eventually um, detail how that rock is like, um, let me come back to it. Like in my head, the reason why I sketched this out the way I did is like, perhaps it was a little more encased in that stone mm -hmm. on those ends, but somebody has taken a tool and like gouged it out, you know, like mm -hmm. just got like it, this got it, got it. raking um, so that you can see what's in the center of it. Maybe it was designed to be that way, or maybe it was a secret and somebody stole it and was like, is this the soul I'm looking for? And yeah. like peeled back a little bit of that rock. Mm -hmm just mm -hmm. to check. Um, there's lore that goes with this, okay? There is <laughs> there is soul vile lore, um, which, speaking of which, I would love to um, hear if anybody has any ideas for what to call this, <laughs> for example, or name who's rock, in it. <laughs> cute rock creature, uh, cute rocks. Um, you nice. know, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, naming and, and prompts, do you use any special techniques you have with when you're composing or a prompt or you're just telling the story to the computer like hey I listen, just talk I to, to talk to it talk, you know okay. just okay. like and okay. I know that there's some ways that maybe you get different or better um, uh, kind of pieces out of it um, but I find that when I'm in the heat of the moment and I'm like I need inspiration for this or that or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I never remember how to do it right anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm good. laughs> because I'm looking for a specific thing. So I just talk to Firefly like it's, you know, it's sitting it, next buddy, to me. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, hey, can you give me a... Uh... <laughs> do you put please in yeah. there? Sometimes. Like... <laughs> I did try it once. I did, I did try it once. Um, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please? Please. Just do that. Okay, so we need... Um, I'm thinking like... I wish I could turn this off because I don't think I need that. <laughs> Stoney wants to name it Grumpy. Um, Can I turn, minimize? Oh yeah, Firefly okay. with dark UI. Yes, yes. Um, yes, yes. So should we do like, um, I'm thinking, could you dark rock, we're starting with dark again. Mm -hmm, dark mm -hmm. uh, obsidian. Yeah, ooh, carved, you can use yeah. word. Carved. Carved uh, with gouges. Oh, any ideas online? Gouges. I think that's how you spell gouges. I'm an abysmal I, yeah, speller um, sometimes. Um, English is my second language, I know. So we're, okay, so we could be buddies yeah, here. Uh, I, I, think I, so. I think it, maybe. Um, gouges and gauges. Um, dark obsidian carved with... Any thought on. online? You guys can suggest claw something? Claw marks. <gasps> can we do claw marks, you know? Um, texture, claw, we might be able to. Yeah, probably, um, yeah. Dark um, obsidian carved with claw marks um, to reveal um, crystal. Yeah, to reveal crystal. That's crystal or liquid or or purple. I don't know. Whatever. Do you need reveal, a contrast there to mask it in a way? Maybe. Yeah, to reveal crystal. Let's say uh, magical crystal. How do I spell reveal? <laughs> 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 that I think that this I was just saying um, before. Uh, on a previous show that like one of the things that scares me the most when I'm doing work live on a broadcast is when I have to spell stuff mm -hmm. every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you guys get nervous <laughs> about that too, you're not alone. We're all human beings and sometimes we misspell things. <laughs> uh, okay, dark obsidian card with claw marks to reveal. Let's test this out. I think that's how you spell reveal and if it's not, mm -hmm. it'll fix it or it'll give us what it thinks we want. That's fine. You um, can generate maybe twice. So that <gasps> oh. This is like, this is like awesome. Sauron <laughs> as an yeah. item. This is amazing. Splintered, crackled, that's, that's somebody suggested. Oh, splintered? Uh, yeah. Okay, Clever. let me snag a few of these because like this one right here, Come to me. You know, those who use Firefly, you can open it in the background and maybe experiment on this as well. And if you have something decent, just copy paste here. Mm -hmm. Just just saying, like yeah. making it more interactive. Um, Let us see what you come up with. Tell us about what you're using. You um, what have no using. power here. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. You know what? I'm not I'm not worried about not having power against uh -huh. this thing. This yeah. looks formidable. Yeah. This I don't know what stuff. it is. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's formidable just the same. Like I, I, I tend to look at it as a, as a element for this. So I love the mm -hmm. the, 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 the top left uh, uh, shape with the, with with with, the, with the, some sort of glow in there. Mm -hmm. I would totally use it. And I often generate 
objects that have radical uh, change in color so I can mask it better. Yeah, uh, too. yeah. So for example, if I use the doorknob or something, the rest I'm asking computer to generate in uh, light green like we have mm -hmm. behind us and you don't see it right now, unfortunately. Uh, but it's easy for me to mask it later and sort of select the object. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and let's interpret what we see here. And that's kind of like what I like to do is just like, okay, I've see, I can see this <laughs> thing and now I would like to kind of interpret how that could look f from, from mm -hmm. me, you know? So um, I think the first thing I'm gonna do, honestly, is I'm gonna snatch up a different brush and it might be this smooth hatch brush. Another thing okay. that I want to do, however, is maybe, do we wanna lighten this up? Cause I don't wanna. Maybe, maybe. Cause, Cause if I'm gonna do dark here, I wanna, it's, it'll, it'll be definitely contrasted much more easily once I have the values in there and then we start changing colors and stuff to separate certain yeah. portions. But um, I definitely. Sam likes the touch of blue. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, just right uh, just a end. reminder, we're uh, 1235, we have okay. 25 more minutes. All right. Um, I think I'm just going to come in with, this is something that I like to do. Um, you can do it, there's a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. I'll show you a couple of ways. Yeah. So I will like just paint bucket something in and then throw that on a blending mode. Um, uh -huh. Maybe uh, uh, like so, like we could come in with like an overlay just to you know brighten that up or soft light just to change the mm -hmm. color or something. Mm -hmm. But another way that you can do this is you can come in um, and I also I'm using clipping masks here to keep mm -hmm. it contained. Yep. Um, but you can come in and mess with the adjustment layer so I can come into brightness and contrast and I can maybe um, brighten this up and then uh, change the contrast to give it more of that um, uh, that contrast mm -hmm. there with that dark and light just to kind of change it so that when I come in um, honestly, I kind of do like being able to v visualize it a little mm -hmm. bit better. Um, when I come in with this darkness around the edges, um, I can just see the difference between those and it doesn't get muddy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an adjustment layer, um, or if you had chosen to paint bucket in and use some of your blending modes, um, it's something that you can change later. You can just come in and hide that. Yeah, yeah, um, then it makes it easy. But uh, now we're gonna come over here because I did start clipping um, onto this shape because this is its own thing here. Um, yep. uh, kind of colored, and you can see like my initial sketch underneath <laughs> there, how squirrely it was. <laughs> um, but you gotta trust that process and like let yourself concept things out before you start diving into the nitty gritty details. Um, so, ooh, cancel. Oh, don't oh, don't forget to save it too. Ooh. Um, <laughs> uh, Stony said, "When I when I have used Firefly, I don't add enough descriptor, uh, descriptors to get unique ideas. I will have to work on that. Yes, yeah, we often forget about this. We treat it as a stock mm -hmm. uh, images. Like let's find horses running on a beach mm -hmm. and not much beyond that. But I highly encourage you to be more specific. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that is it. Is it the daylight? Is it what kind of angle is it? Is it the close up? Is it etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, then you get what you really, really, really." Need. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to point out how different this workflow is from the past workflows that I've been at least um, accustomed to. Uh, it's there is no longer search on the internet and uh, you know hours of browsing. That's the crystal that I'm looking for. That's the rock that I'm looking for. No, maybe no. This is I can't mm -hmm. copy this. I can't do screenshot or whatever. Um, now you go to this too. You request what you want it. And mm -hmm. you just bring it to your light table and then start, you know, uh, mm -hmm. being inspired by yeah. that. Uh, to me, it's a huge simplification. When I design uh, custom posters right now, I, I use it all the time. Yeah. I put this on my canvas and just it's right just there. Just go. Yep. Um, awesome. Thank you also for commenting. Uh, it's much appreciated. Um, it helps us to gauge if we're if we're resonating. If, if you're having fun, let mm -hmm. us know. If you're bored, I uh, hope not. <laughs> uh, let we'll us add more magic. We'll add more magic, please. Furiously Sh add more five. magic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's magic. I am okay. just kind of like starting to bring this into mm -hmm. a 3D mm -hmm. space, yeah. you know, like just trying to kind of, and I've got this different brush, which I like, um, because here it's gonna be a lot softer, but here I've got like this nice hatching kind of texture in with this, and what I'm doing basically right now is coming in um, with like the end of this, and just first of all kind of sorting out how I'm going to 
light this thing with some darker areas. And I'm also suggesting like a lot of these little hatches that I've placed in here, those are grooves. So hopefully if you couldn't visualize what I was going for before, you can start to see that, you know, that depth yeah. now as it's like kind of it's being like carved out. Dug. Yeah. Little, th those are our gouges. Yeah. They're our claw marks. Yeah. Um, so I can put a little bit there. I don't want to put too much over here, maybe on this end, but I want more light to be mm. like in there. Um, so in your head, you're planning where the light should be and you're sort of following like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing light the top left and illustrating everything as I assume this will yeah. bounce. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, it's just like kind of, and you know, I, I will almost certainly have to like come back and tweak as I go. I'm not trying to get it like 100% perfect um, on the first go around, you know, but just getting some um, some basic suggestion of that form um, accurately mm -hmm. in there is really going to do a lot to see me through to the rest. And I, th I think that's another thing too is like, um, earlier on uh, in my uh, artistic journey, I was very, very impatient oh, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like, okay, I know it's that I want to, yeah, it, you know, I know I want to suggest some lighting here, but I'll do that later. I'm just going to, you know, pass it up. But you need to uh, understand your own personal process and understand exactly how, how far you need to take certain concept portions mm -hmm. so that you do remember to do it later because I'd be like, ah, oh, well, I'll just scribble right here yeah, and then yeah, I'll remember yeah. that and then I don't come back yes. to it. Yes. You know, so I have to, you know, kind of learn how I remember stuff and make sure I'm communicating with future me enough that I would mm -hmm. actually go mm -hmm. back and do it. Um, but sometimes um, I get, I would get so impatient. I still do sometimes. Yeah. I'm still guilty of it, you know, where I'm just like, I'm so eager to, like we were talking about before, doing those details that I'm like, I don't have to spend time on this. I'll do this later. No, I won't. Yeah. I just want to get past it so I can do the other thing. Yes, yes, you know? yes. But you got to take that time. You got to take that time. And there, there's, there's beauty in those details and mastering those details. Like, do you listen to music when, when, you, oh, when yeah. you design? Oh, yeah. I, a majority of the time, though, I listen to audiobooks. Oh, oh okay. I, I okay. love listening to audiobooks. I used to, I tried podcasts, um, and I was listening to, like, you know, like, true crime, true crime uh -huh. and, like, oh, spooky really? podcasts and stuff, stuff, but, yeah. Are you surprised? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll be surprised if you were listening to something, like, really Butterflies light, and sunshine. Light and stuff. Watch <laughs> Lifetime or something. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I listen to a lot of, um, a lot of audiobooks. Books mm -hmm. now, um, and uh, I have like some favorite authors that uh, I will always be like waiting for the next books to come out um, and things, just so that I can like dig into the mm -hmm. next story, and then I just like let my brain go. Um, uh, I don't know if there's anybody else that is like super into uh, like listening to audiobooks or whatever, but I highly recommend it if you are hunting for um, some artistic inspiration. What are you um, doing? I am reading. Um, I recently was turned on to uh, a fabulous author um, by the name of Brandon Sanderson, and he is like high fantasy, oh, okay. like, um, and his books are like 1,200 pages, oh, God. but they don't, you'd think that, but uh -huh. they're super, super long. The audiobooks are like 60 hours, <laughs> and it's good the whole way through. Oh, really? Okay. It okay. never gets boring, and so I will <laughs> pop in like the audiobook and yeah. just never run out of super exciting stuff to listen to. That is awesome. Um, you don't have to change in, in the meantime. I just want to say something. This is like certain point in your career when you're designing, when you're, you're, you're sketching, you're, you're ideating, mm -hmm. where you can mentally do other things and your hands will do the job. Yeah. This, is the, this is the moment where uh, you know that you're proficient with the tools that you're doing. I'm not sure if folks are sharing the same sentiment, but uh, I discovered that. Like mm -hmm. when I can think about my 401k and you know where, where to take my car to, the, to, to, to be the fixed. Shop. Right? Yeah. 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 And uh, when I can do this and at the same time I can perform, that means that I mastered my, my tools. Mm -hmm. I know what the shift F5 will do and I don't even think about it. Yeah. This is the part of the education that I was, I was sort of uh, doing at, at different schools. When students ask me to, what did you do? I didn't know. And I've, I've been doing this for 25 years or so. And like, oh, do I look stupid now, right? <laughs> but then there's this moment of like, you, you don't care if I was shift at five. I don't know. You have muscle memory of this mm -hmm. and you play it like a piano, right? So when you listen to your, your audiobooks, you are comfortable in your environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that you're, you have it, uh, even with, with Firefly right now. Mm -hmm. 
and you're just doing your thing. Your mm -hmm. vision uh, carries through your fingers, muscles, and then you can think of, uh, listen, actually actively listen to, to the stuff um, and think of something else. So that, yeah. that's yeah. that's huge. I highly recommend, too, where it's like, you know, it is it is definitely, I, I, I agree 100%, as you say, like kind of a sign of like getting to the point where you're really, really comfortable with your craft and you know, you know, what you're doing and you're kind of like on yep. autopilot, uh, really, you know, you're just going through your, your um, your process and you're feeling mm -hmm. those motions rather than like specifically thinking I will place the stroke here yeah, and I exactly. will, I will you know go here, then but I, I have to change that. I I totally recommend um, like kind of practicing that in a way because the I started listening to audiobooks while working um, one time when I was I was working on a client project and I just to be perfectly honest and I'm sure that you've been here and other mm -hmm. people in chat have been here but um, I couldn't stand the project anymore mm -hmm. I, it, it was one of those things that was like it, it started to get real tedious and and um, I was like I'm dreading finishing this project or working on this project and then I realized well if I pop an audiobook in, then yep. I could do I could just go on autopilot and suddenly I wasn't there working on a project and like trying to figure out how to solve these problems that the mm -hmm. client needs solved. I was there for a good story. Yeah. Yep. I, it was like watching a movie without needing your eyes. <laughs> you know, it's like playing a video game without needing your hands because and so I, my eyes and my hands can be dedicated to this. And I was there so excited, so pumped about what's going to happen next and everything that before I knew it, I had finished that project mm -hmm. yep. because my brain was trained on something else and passionate excited about you know that other thing um, and it's a, a good audiobook has gotten me through many a uh, many a difficult project yeah, 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 I <laughs> you I know so I often use music for that mm -hmm. um, I, I do audiobooks for driving that mm -hmm. sort of oh, calms yeah. me down yeah. a little bit uh, but I listen, for example, to dubstep, and then what I what I've noticed is that I do brushes according to the yeah. to the tempo. Yeah. Beep, beep. Whatever the beat is, I I and I know it may sound weird, but this is how my uh, brain works. And when I come to uh, uh, search, even this dynamic music helps me to to search for more. I don't give mm -hmm. up, like literally, like you know, in store you're influenced by music, right? You yeah. they want you to make feel good, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So I make myself feel dynamic and and fast mm -hmm. and. And then I go on this hyper, a little bit hyper moment where I ha get this energy from this music and it helps me actually to, to your point, to not stop at certain point and yeah. not give up, but maybe abandon it for a while. Mm -hmm. No, I say like, you know, let's keep, keep doing this. The music takes me to mm -hmm. the next step. Like, okay, this song is not even half there yet. Um, yeah. So I will keep exploring. And this is how my projects go. So I'm glad that you're using very the same technique. Actually, I, I love awesome. that you say specifically, like it keeps you like working diligently. Cause mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I haven't been here for 30 minutes. I've been here for seven minutes <laughs> yep. um, because I know that this song isn't that long and I've only listened to it once. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, it definitely keeps me on track and I'll say, well, you know, I'm getting really sick of this and I don't want to be sitting in my chair anymore, but I'll listen to two more chapters mm -hmm. and then I will take a break. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, so this is starting to look pretty Whoa. cool. Whoa, we're talking, talking, and this is like... Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like kind of carved out. We've got, you know, but the thing that is definitely catching my eye about it is like right in here, it's getting a little muddy. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of vari variation of contrast, and so we can we can touch that up a little bit by, um, because I know that we want to do some glowing things in here, so what I can do is I can come around the edges. Oops, let me make sure I'm not erasing. Um, I can come come in here around the edges and start to kind of just like, just <laughs> barely like kind of add a little bit. And normally if this was not going to be, you know, if it was gonna be in perfect darkness oh. over here, um, then I wouldn't do this because it wouldn't really be accurate. But if there's gonna be something glowing on the other side of these, then we can do like a tiny rim light mm -hmm. kind of um, on the on the edge just to really like pull that out. And I'd like to add some color because I know we're kind of coming up on the end of our stream pretty soon here. Oh. Um, I know, but luckily for me and for you and for everybody else, we're gonna be right back here. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, so it's slightly different thing. <laughs> yeah, slightly different thing, but the same, awesome. you know, same art Same energy, yeah. yes, 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 we're going. So please continue with the questions if, if you have time. 
and um, uh, luckily uh, for us you want to spend it with us that would be fantastic mm -hmm. if not uh, spend it with your loved ones but okay we'll miss you we'll miss you we're your loved ones <laughs> i adore you guys you're my so, favorite people stony mentioned mentioned sewing um, actually as a as a exercise or watching mm. tv mm. i was recently at the conference and the woman next to me was uh, uh, making a hat Oh yeah. It was Just fantastic. The whole thing. thing, the whole conference he was making hats there. Fantastic. And she said that that you know keeps her entertained, allow, you know, pay attention. She she knows what to do with her hands, mm -hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, we stay in touch. I've <laughs> always envied people who could like knit and like uh -huh. talk and do other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes I can't I can't multitask that well. Yeah. You know, but I do think it's really cool. By the way, just to, um uh, okay, because I yeah. did come in and sample some colors. Mm -hmm. I really liked yes. um, this area with the blue and the mm -hmm, purple. Mm -hmm. So I snagged like a soft bluish lavender color. Sweet. And we're going to throw that in here. Um, and I've got a clipping mask. So you're adding um, colors right now. You were you were shaping yeah. it. We're using just grays, right? Yes. And oh, I think okay. it's better to add in those values and stuff so that you can really start to build that out. Mm, so when good. you do place the colors, because I like to start in grayscale, mm -hmm. then you get a little something like this where, you, you know, it'll start to pull it itself out of there. Um, a little bit, and it looks, let's see if we can do, I feel like soft light and and uh, overlay are a little too contrasty. Um, darken works, but the thing with darken is we probably want to add a little bit more value there before we really get that full effect. So if I can come in here and I've got, I mean, I do have a lot of stuff, maybe, maybe just, let's actually test, let's grab a brighter purple. Or maybe this brighter, like bluish so color. You're using this as an inspiration on many levels, not only the shapes and forms, and uh, you know the, the the story that it tells, but also like you're sampling colors. From yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Do you I, often sample like elements uh, <laughs> from from this as well and incorporate this, or you're? Um, no. I just I prefer just to okay. do the illustration mm -hmm. for that's me. That's yes. that's just what brings yep. me joy and mm -hmm. works for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I I don't see why somebody else couldn't you yeah, know like and, and use it for like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it is also you know that's those are those are techniques more. Um, you know, I I I would have loved to be a concept artist ah. um, because concept art was one of the things that I was pursuing um, early on, and I I ended up like doing uh, some slightly different kind of work with digital painting, but like doing a matte painting, mm -hmm. doing a photo bash, oh. doing all of those concepting um, things. I think that that is where that sort of technique could really really come mm -hmm. into play and hit home um, to snag those textures and and bring that in and paint over would probably um, really work super well for yeah. um, for somebody's yeah. workflow, yeah. Um, this is a little, you know, I would maybe want to tamper with it a little bit more. I'm not sure if I like the color 100%, but well, maybe I do like that because then now I can come in. <laughs> you can do highlights with, on this. And yeah, yeah. Stuff. You're, you're, yeah. you're remove, reading remove my mind. Remove elements for the eyes. Let's you know, I, I wish I had this technology some years ago. Jesus, it makes me want to cry. Yeah. Like, so I was not in matte painting business, mm -hmm. even though I did work with matte, matte painters. Mm -hmm. And I'm just shouting out to Kevin and others. Uh, these tools would make our life so much mm -hmm. easier, mm -hmm. uh, so much better, actually, mm -hmm. in, in a way. We, we had to do shortcuts. We had to, you know, pretend that certain elements were there, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, where they were, they were not. We were just playing with the, with the human eye, in a way, mm -hmm. um, as artists do. Uh, but now, if I had this, Jesus, like sample here, sample there, mm -hmm. take this, take that. Yeah. And at least you can do like 60% for other folks to see if it if yeah. that's the path we should continue. Does it and read? And, yeah, whatever yeah. the finishing uh, section of that will be, uh, that's that's a separate story. But, oh, God, to have those tools. Now I'm so happy that I can work on those tools to give them to others. So that's, yeah. that's my personal joy. I uh, think uh, I was just yeah. having the conversation just before our live stream that, um, you know, I was using Photoshop when I was 13 mm -hmm. and, like, using, th like, digital art tools when I was about 13. So that's... A long time. <laughs> it's like, like seven it's like years 17 ago. years ago. <laughs> so, but like just the difference in tools and what we have available to us um, now versus I wish we had it. Then. Yeah. I, oh, don't, oh, I don't wish. Get me started. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've got that in. I'd like to add a small color um, just to our inside uh, portion here in the next minute. But um, does anybody have a magical name 
for the soul that's trapped in this vial, <laughs> would you guys like to name it? If there's any cool names that you, you know, like a wizard, a wizard's name, um, that he's in the vial okay, and we'll throw him in there um, because I will write it down real quick. There so is a name for your purple is uh, Voodoo Vial Purple. I mm -hmm. approve. <laughs> I approve of that 100%. Which is awesome. You should call like Pantone and be like, hey guys. There's, I'm gonna need you to make something this, this for me. Pur this purple <laughs> naa. Uh, it's not CF seven forty five. It's uh, voodoo vow. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Freddy. Um, I don't know. We have to. We have to bring a little bit more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <at least> under. <laughs> we could also. I mean, do you have any suggestions? Would you like to give uh, the wizard a name? You know, I often like when I watch those films that these names like. Sounds weird, like Gazurgur, Bindurban, Malargur, you know, and I often, I often get lost. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, we got a but. Um, wow. Just a couple of minutes, but you know, uh, Adobe has a fabulous podcast uh, yeah. called In the Making, uh, which has been super cool. We were just talking about audiobooks um, and all the things that you can listen to um, while you're working, and I think that the In the Making podcast would be a fabulous thing yeah. to kind of um, pull up and listen to. Um, Teresa Ao is uh, doing a Fabulous, fabulous job. She's got some really excellent people on there um, who are talking about their own experiences and offering advice, and I think it's a pretty great place to be. So, yes. <laughs> there, there is a name, one name, uh, Voodoo, uh, Voodoo uh, Violet Vow uh, Soul, Soul from Christian. Okay, uh, that's awesome. That's Violet better Val. than Bargur yeah. Guru. Uh, I came up. I liked with. yours too. I liked <laughs> yours too. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's where we got, um, and I think we're probably out of time. But I will, um, if you guys want to DM me on Instagram and give me any other suggestions for descriptions of this item and stuff, I'd love to post the final product with some of your ideas uh, incorporated into it. But uh, yeah, I think we're probably, it's probably time for us to skedaddle. But we'll to be right back. To switch seats. Yeah, we're, we're going to switch. Gonna we're going to swap magical powers here. And awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to oh, have you. Oh, pleasure as well. Thank you so much, everybody here. <laughs> um, and I'll, we'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah.